Chamber Talk. Got a great show today. I want to welcome my friends to the show, Richard and Diane Nesbitt. Richard, Diane, thank you so much for taking time out of your, your busy schedules and, and coming to sit down with us a little bit today. I uh, want the community to know a little bit more about both of you and more importantly, what you guys do out at Renesda. So uh, I want to start, Richard, if okay, we'll start with you and, and, and I want you to introduce your beautiful wife, your bride here <laughs> and talk about, uh, just tell us a little bit about you two. Thank you, Heath, for allowing us to come here and talk a little bit about ourselves. This is my wife, Diane. Uh, we've been married for 45, at the end of this year, we'll be married for 45 years. We have two kids, one named Quentin, which is our, is our son. He's the oldest, and my daughter is Lakeisha. She lives here, but my son lives in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. And, and Diane, if you would tell me um, with the business, uh, and I know Richard and I have had this conversation a few mm -hmm. times, but I've, I've not heard your version. So the idea to do this uh, and, and picking out the place to do it and, and kind of how all this got started. Well, my husband, he always wanted the business and uh, and we always had talked about it and prayed about it to the good Lord. And uh, we didn't know how to go about doing it. So we, we prayed and prayed and Lord kind of like, you know, thinner there. And uh, and I've been enjoying every minute of it. Ever since we have been enjoying every minute of it. And and the name, how how did we come about the name? Let my me talk husband. about that a little my bit. See <laughs> if you know uh, when when I do something, I I put a I don't care what it is. He's I put a lot of thought into it, and I realize and I know by my experience in running other successful businesses for other people here that the name is important. So when we decided that we was going to come up with our business, first of all, we decided that the business that we, we did a research that the business we was going to do we was going to do was going to be unique. Mm -hmm. And I got doing my research, I realized that there's several ways that you can go into a business and be successful, and you got to think about that. Mm -hmm. One way you can go in and you could do what everybody else is doing, but you got to do it better. And the other way that you can go in and be successful, you can do what nobody else is doing and provide a service for the community that's not there. So I decided to take the second. But then I also realized that because it was a business that was nobody else was doing and it was a unique type of business, then I had to decide then we had to have a unique type of name. And one of the reasons I decided on having a UT type of name because when I decided to do this, I wasn't going to just try to build a business, but I was going to build a brand. Mm -hmm. So when people think of Renesta, they think of my brand. So how did I come up with the name? It was, it took a lot of soul searching to do it. Mm -hmm. It took me about a about a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I come up with all type of ideas. You know, I thought, look at what other people was doing. Uh, some wife and daughter, uh, his and hers, uh, the Nesbitt's uh, enterprises, and I decided that wouldn't do for what we are, what we want to do because we had we had to be different. Mm -hmm. So it, I was brainstorming at the computer one night. My wife was back there in the bed. She might have been asleep. I don't know. And it came to me. He said, "Well, you all going to be in business together. Y'all going to be partners. Then why not combine your names?" So that's how it came up, Renesta. Well, break it down. My name is Richard, which mm -hmm. the R-I comes from the first two initials of Richard. N-E-S, which is my last name, is Nesbitt. That came in with the last three initials of my last name. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, my wife, Diane, that's where the D-I come from. Right. And so the proper pronunciation for it is Renesta. And so that's how it became a business. That's, that's fantastic. And, and Richard, just in case anybody watching the show today is not familiar with what you guys do and where you're located, talk for just a minute, or, or both of you, however you want to do it, tag team it, um, but, but where your location is, and then some, just, and you, we could go on and on mm -hmm. and on, but some of the different uh, types of events that you host and, and what's offered. Well, well, it's located on Highway 19 South, about one mile on the other side of I-16, mm -hmm. on the right. And uh, 
it when we tried to start this, we we was wanting to have an event type of venue, but having a rustic barn type business that wasn't in the in the plan. Mm -hmm. We looked at several large buildings here in Dublin. Uh, I think one of them is the it's a truck stop just below my house. It's called it's, it used to be the old Piglet. We looked at that. Mm -hmm. Then we looked at one on uh, North Jefferson Red Cross from uh, AutoZone. It's a paint place. Now right. we looked at both of those, but mm -hmm. the realtor that we was looking at, she asked me. I, I think I was alone that day, and she asked me. She said, "Have you seen the barn?" And I said, no. I, I, she said, "I said, where is it located?" She said, "Well, it's on Highway 19." I said, "Well, I'll ride down there and look at it." My wife, I think she was at the mall, Walmart, shopping that at day. Mall. And so I rode down there and looked at it. And that's when the vision really came into place. I called my wife. I said, baby, come out here. You got to see this. Mm -hmm. And then that's when the rustic vision came in. It was nothing like it is now. We've done a whole lot of work to it. Mm -hmm. But we are actually uh, turned an old barn into a rustic type venue. It's the only one within Dublin, Lawrence County. I think probably the closest one might be 45 to 50 miles from here, so it's the only one of it tight. Uh, it, it accommodate, we, we accommodate, the largest crowd that we've accommodated is up to 900 people. You can safely seat 500. We have many, many weddings. I, I did a little calculation yesterday, last night. We started in, two, we bought the building in 2015. Yeah, 15. But we really didn't start operation of 2016 right. and I did a little calc I, I went back over my my count uh, we've done over 250 weddings wow. in the mm -hmm. six years right. so and I calculated that by every we've had some weddings 400 people but the average wedding personal account out there is like 175 so right. that's almost 40,000 people over the period of wow. time that we've done. That's a lot of events. So we offer, we, we rent the venue, we offer tables and chairs that come with it. It's almost already decorated. we got hanging lights from the ceiling. We've got uh, the, a large kitchen dining room with heated and, and cooled, uh, warming space, plenty of cooling space. He didn't include the restrooms, and then we've had we've done a lot of upgrades since then. It was an open venue, but we've actually got it now where you can close it in. Right. You can close it in. The doors close in, but it's still open because you can open the doors and then close them back. Right. We have heaters for the to make you as comfortable as possible being an outdoor venue and uh, in the winter time. And then we have those big ceiling fans. It's a it's a name for it that I don't know if I could say. Yeah, I know <laughs> it's a name for them yeah. that I don't know if I could say right, it. Right. But you see it, it's the, the big A fans, right. and they really make it comfortable during the summer months. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, Rich, I want to talk some more about the different events and the venue and the work that you guys have done and the additions that you've made um, We're gonna after we take a, a quick commercial break. But before we go to that break, I want to ask you, the first time you went out and you saw <laughs> the yeah. land and you saw and, and Richard maybe shared what his vision and thoughts were. Mm -hmm. What what were your thoughts? What did you Well think? when when I got there it was it looked so good. You know, outside with the trees all bugged up. But uh when I got on the inside I loved it. I loved the, the wood and and I, I knew what I could do with the decorate on the inside. It was it was very impressive to me. I so, liked it. So was there never a doubt? You said no. yes, absolutely. We or were you scared to death and thinking, oh my, this is a large investment and how are we going to do this? Or I was excited. You were excited because I knew what we could, we were going to prosper to, to have Amen. there, and I was just like, oh, this is it here. Fantastic. I told the realtor, I said, we we want it. Okay, and that's then. So that's what we want to talk about. We're going to take a, a quick commercial break, and when okay. we come back, we're going to start talking about how you started building and growing out there from what was a, a barn and a, a pretty much okay. a wooded area uh, into what you've created today. So we'll come right back after this quick commercial. Okay. The City of Dublin Natural Gas provides the most cost-efficient source of energy available today. So for your home, choose the most natural resource, safe, clean, efficient, 
All new subdivisions around the Dublin area have natural gas available. Start reducing your energy bills today with Dublin City Natural Gas Department. Natural gas, the smart choice. Call 277-5048 today and let us help you start saving today. Whether you're a Braves fan or a Dogs fan, it feels good to be a winner. I'm Don Carswell, and you'll have fun with a winning deal from Dublin Chevy Nissan. Come and see our championship selection of new and pre-owned trucks here at Dublin Chevy Nissan. Titan or Frontier, it's your choice. Sierra or Silverado, you're the winner. For the W, all you have to do is call, click, or come in. And remember, Don sells cars well only at Dublin Chevy Nissan. Welcome back again, Richard, Diane. Thank you so much for joining us today. So before the commercial break, we were getting ready, and Richard, you already alluded to some of the, the upgrades and the additions and things, and, and I know you didn't even get in half of it because I know a lot of the things that you guys have done out there, and, and it has been so wonderful to see the growth that's taking place out there and the additions um, to, to what, again, was a, a barn and a wooded area right. and what you guys have created out there together you mentioned 900 people i think but if you if you wanted to have an event with 400 people and, and or, or 40 people even and have some tables and chairs um you guys offer if i'm correct complete decorations food catering everything we have one stop come see you and you can you can plan it see a lot of people don't know that we offer that service but most people rent it they rich they rent the venue with the tables and chairs and everything that comes with it but they don't realize that we offer a package deal too uh if you wanted to come and rent our venue we do offer package deal we are, we have a group of clients that I that work with us mm -hmm. that we have put it everything together if you you just tell us what your budget is and how much you want to spend and we'll tell you if we'll we'll figure it out that you can if you can get what you want for what you're willing to spend mm -hmm. but we can make it happen we will make sure that the we have the caterer the decorator the wedding planner the cake the photographer all that will mm -hmm. all you have to do is just get your dress and, and let me tell you, thank you. I know you guys support other local businesses. And, and Richard Dane, that is so important. You guys know as small business owners how important it is to, yeah. to work with other local businesses mm -hmm. and support one another. You guys have even brought multiple new members into the chamber uh, from events and different things that we've had out at, at your place before mm -hmm. that have joined the chamber. So thank you for, for doing that and supporting other local businesses as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, and, and you're right about that. I'm I'm very conscientious about reaching out to other local mm -hmm. businesses, especially small businesses. Matter of fact, a lot of times when when clients, I call it, like to call my customers clients, when they come to me, if we can accommodate them, I recommend them to one of the other local businesses. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. and, and Richard, you guys, uh, so I've seen concerts, I've seen business events. Uh, corporate planning or, or strategic planning type events, dinners, um, family gatherings, what, what else? Am I missing anything else, different types of events that you guys have out there? Well, we, we, have, we, all, we have events of all types of, from all cultures in Dublin. The Patels, they rent it a lot. They, they rent it for weddings. And now, on the way, let me stop you real quick. You did some wonderful things out there, and you got some wonderful additions out there for, for the brides and the bridesmaids and, and some different uh, lodging options. Okay. Talk about that for a oh, second. Yeah. Well, we, we, uh, when we first had built it, it didn't have a place. Well, it had the inside part had a room in the back, but for, for several years we used that for, for the bride and her party to come in and get dressed. That was all we had. But over the years, we actually have built a bridal suite. Mm -hmm. 
It's separate. It's separate from the really good building, and that comes with it. If you rent the package for one day, you still get to use that. It's fully furnished. Bathroom, heaters, air condition, and like we have microwave, a little refrigerator. We try to keep house try to keep yeah. sodas in it, you know, <laughs> for their comfort. Right. So they still rent it, get it for the one day. Mm -hmm. But now, if you rent it for the two days, then it becomes a lodging for you. You use it for that day. You get to stay there Friday night, Saturday night, and check out Sunday at ten, just like you would at a local motel. And, and you guys are so accommodating and, and a pleasure to work with. I know, like I said, from some of the events we've had out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, we need this or we need one of those. Right. And, and you do it with a smile, just like, like Diane's smiling right now. <laughs> um, you know, you don't, you, just customer service, just great customer service and willingness to work with folks. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to make sure and mention, and, and I wasn't sure which part of the show we would talk about this today, but it was close to this time last year with all the additions and all of the work and investment that you've made into your business out there, you guys are recognized as our business, our small business of the year. Of and, and I want to say congratulations again to you for accomplishing that. Um, that's recognition from your peers. And it doesn't get any better than that to me for, for your community right. to say, hey, we realize, we recognize what you guys have done and, and want to honor you. So again, on behalf of the Chamber and the Board of Directors, um, because it was during a year of COVID, we right. didn't have an annual dinner and, and didn't get to get you up on stage and some of the, the extra uh, coverage and recognition that, that is well deserved. So right. I want to make sure we take time today to, to say thank you for that and, and congratulations for that. Um, is there any plan or talk or anything about uh, future? Any, any more additions? I know, like I said, you, you've added, you've got heat, you've got air, you've added lights, you've got uh, audio video equipment. If somebody comes yes, in and they need yeah, to have a have corporate that. planning event or something, yeah. I think you guys pretty much have everything covered. Well, now. we got another house out there. We put another house Built out there. Built another yeah. for, for lodging. Yes. So, mm -hmm. okay. I got that yeah. Yeah, I was going to mention that. We are building another, like a one bedroom lodging that we're going to use. Now that it's to be available, but it won't be included in the package, okay. but it, it would be there if someone has a uh, uh, aunt or uncle or grandmother from out of town that comes in and they rather than staying at one of the local motels, they can stay right there. Mm -hmm. Ample parking space. Sure it is. Ample parking space. Out there. Mm -hmm. Like you said, full kitchen. Right. Um, chairs, tables, anything. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you've got an event of any magnitude, um, any size, pretty much, uh, Richard and Diane can can take care of you and, and work with you and plan. Mm -hmm. And then any of the the resources that someone mm -hmm. would need, if you two don't mm -hmm. do that, you've got a team of folks mm -hmm. that you partner with and work with right. uh, on a regular basis right. to provide whatever may be needed. Yeah. And you, uh, you ask whether we have plans for the future we i'm always thinking what's what's next sometimes my wife has to put the brakes on me. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes once we complete one thing i'm thinking my i'm my way of thinking is that as long when you're green as long as you're green you're growing but when you get to the point that you think you're right then you're right so you always got to be in that green phase of thinking that what are, what are we going to do next? That's right. Because the, because the society is constantly changing. And if you don't change with it and add new things, then you're going to become stagnant. That's exactly And they're right. going to look. Could you imagine what, why you don't see eight track tapes no more? And the companies that produce them is out of business because they feel, they refuse to change. That's right. But we still listen to music. We still we, listen we to music. music. That's because right. the one that's retooled, the one Same that's retooled, <laughs> they went to different type right. of. They were willing. I, I like, you know, I was just sharing, I was over in uh, um, Cochrane the other day working with their chamber board, and, and we talked about that and change and keeping up with the community and right. keeping mm -hmm. up with the times. And I like right. to think for our chamber of commerce, even, we don't. We don't embrace change. I hope we lead change. Right. And, and I want to talk with you a little bit about that as well, being on the Chamber Board of Directors now. But one of my uh, sayings that I, I found somewhere and I like to share with people, if you're coasting, you're going downhill. Uh, you can't coast 
up a hill. That's right. So if we mm -hmm. find ourselves in a, a position where we feel like everything's okay and, and we're coasting along and we're doing all right, mm -hmm. uh, we might be in trouble. We might need to check ourselves and uh, coasting is not a, necessarily a good thing. Mm -hmm. sure. So um, again, I got a few more things I want to cover with you. We need to take one more quick commercial break and then we'll be right back. I'm Heath Richter, and uh, we just uh, want to invite everybody to come on down to uh, the Houston Clinic and check us out at our new facility. Uh, we've been in Dublin for a while now, obviously, but uh, have, uh, have a new office here, and we'd just like you to come down and see some of the new stuff we're offering. And uh, if you need to get checked out, we'd be glad to do that for you. We've got uh, able to do some ultrasound-guided injections now and um, physical therapy and just a little bit better space, so hopefully we can get you in and out of here a little bit quicker. Come by and see us today at our brand new location, the Houston Clinic Medical Drive in Dublin. This moment in black history is brought to you by Dublin Ford. Today we honor Washington Street Presbyterian Church. Serving our community for over 70 years is one of Dublin's oldest and most community-minded churches. On October 11, 1953, the Reverend Glenn Doris called a congregational meeting of the people to assemble in the Dublin 4-H Club building. Reverend Doris, pastor of Henry Memorial Presbyterian Church, had been approached about helping to organize a Presbyterian church for the Negro citizens of Dublin. They met in homes around the city and formulated a plan which would eventually become Washington Street Presbyterian Church. The founding of Washington Street Presbyterian Church was uniquely special in the post-World War II South of the 1950s. Today we honor Washington Street Presbyterian Church in this moment in black history. Brought to you by Dublin Ford. Looks like you got some new vehicles in. Yeah, but this chip shortage isn't going away anytime soon. Our friends need to know that if they order their vehicle from Dublin Ford Lincoln, the factory puts that order to the front of the line. I wish someone would solve this chip problem. We got chips now! Daddy's going to be so proud. I'm going to need a bigger pantry. Problem solved. Welcome back to the show again, Richard, Diane, thank you so much for, for taking time out today. And, and I just want to say too, it's, it's just always such a pleasure to be in your company. Um, I, I know it's both of you love the Lord and, and that spirit it's is just, true. Yeah. You, your cups like we, we our cups overflow. Right. And, and we're blessed every day we get up and, and we get to do the things that we get to do. That's um, right. I like to share a lot of times with people, you know, you have people that have to and people that get to, That's and, right. and we get to. Yeah. And so what a, a privilege that is and, and Richard one of the things I hope you see it this way that you get to do these days is uh, you serve on the chamber board and as a, a board of directors and so um, we're honored to have you aboard our board and, and what you bring to that board but I want to know what that means to you uh, and and what do you see or, or what maybe have you learned um, differently about the business community from your amount of time that you've been on the board well, I, I really appreciate the chamber for all the community for choosing me to serve on the board of directors. I consider that a tremendous achievement. And I really look forward to serving. I've been coming to some of the board meetings, but of course I won't become a voting member until this, to this well, year. You are. You're a voting member I'm now. a member now. You are. But yes, in sir. the past. I came to the members and I look forward to serving to know that the whole community now has a representative to there. That, and I, the community, the, especially the black community, to know that I'm going to be at the table and that if there are any issues that are going to help bring our community together in Dublin and Lawrence County, that they feel like is not being represented in Dublin as a whole, give me a call. Amen. And then let's talk about that. You and I talked about that a little bit even before we came on the air today. Um, you know, working together mm -hmm. and, and growing our community. And yeah, and Diane, we have that conversation right. as well. You know, we, we've got so many things, Richard. I, I can sit with you guys forever and ever in a day and, <laughs> and we can talk about things that we share, right. things that we cherish, things that are important to us, our morals, our values and our beliefs. Now we could sit if we wanted to and we could say, well, here's what makes me different from you and here's what makes me different from you. We wouldn't have very much of a relationship. 
That's and right. we wouldn't want to work together or spend time together. That's right. And, and yes, we realize we have some differences. But boy, we got so many more things in common, don't we? Yep. Do, yes, we sure do. <laughs> and this one of the things, that, and me and we've always, me and my wife have talked about, talked about that. And we all, we have realized many, many years ago that we Dublin and, and Lawrence County and America as a whole will never become to rise to its true greatness until we are all considered equal. And so that's my plan in working on the chamber and, and, and even in the city of Dublin to make to bring together the community as a whole so that we can be the great city, county, and the country that we was meant to be. I, I could not agree with you more, I, and it is. It's, it's putting aside, and everybody has them. That's okay. You've got personal opinions and that's ideas right. Right. And, and things that you want to see, but what we have to remember is that what's best for our community that's right and, and we we talked about we want a safe place to live and work and play and for our families mm -hmm. and our children to be able to grow and, and enjoy uh, a good quality of life as well mm -hmm. and so working together and and working on the things that we share and that we have in common not trying to, to nitpick or figure out what makes us different right uh, than one another I think would be a great start to, to having that. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you this, as, as small business owners and, and growing a business, what are some, some if you'd say, challenges or opportunities maybe that you've faced and, and had to overcome? Or has, has everything really, and, and I know the Lord blesses you yeah. abundantly in, in what yeah. you do, but are, are there some things sometimes or things that you faced along the way that maybe you could share with someone else that, that would help them? Uh, if they're interested in growing a business mm -hmm. or investing? Yeah, there, there are some things that we was able to face coming up. A lot of the challenges is to be, get educated about what it takes to start and go into business. Mm -hmm. So do your homework. Do Don't your homework. And that's where I think the Chamber can help. And I think they, are, they, are have, they have some programs there where that they kind of coach small businesses and we and we actually went through some of that when we first started the business mm -hmm. josh uh josh from the small business administration out of mm -hmm. he, he came down and met with me and diane several times mm -hmm. that that's one of the things it helps us and he kind of we draw mapped out a plan mm -hmm. Help us with our business plan and put our crunch did our crunches of our numbers mm -hmm. and let us know that because my, 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 my horizon was big. And Josh came down and set me and my wife down. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what, what you're talking about and what you can have. Right. And when he put the numbers out there, the reality, the right. reality set in, we realized, okay, we might need to step back a little bit, but that was education for us. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it allowed us to be successful because of, we had a win at it with the outlook that I had. I think me and Josh, Said Joyce said, "Well, you know, in order to do what you want to do uh, from the outset, he said you had to be making somewhere like fifteen or twenty thousand dollars a month." He said, "You think you're gonna have that many weddings?" Right. <laughs> and I knew from the outset that we wasn't, so we cut it back. But then that's one thing: getting helping the community, especially the small business, become educated as in doing the research, business plan. And, and so what Richard alluded to there was SBDC, and we're great partners with them at the Chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, we can set up an appointment for you uh, and have them come and meet you in the Chamber offices or, or even come to mm -hmm. your business. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, we have a small business council at the Chamber, mm -hmm. and, and from time to time we have folks come in and ask for help, whether it's finances, whether it's hiring practices or cash flow or marketing, uh, and we take uh, from our membership which is almost 600 businesses here in Dublin and Lawrence County. And, and I may say, Richard, I need you to come in or Diane and, and one or two other. And, and we've got a small business here that needs help. And you guys have been there right. and, and done that and mm -hmm. you're successful. Mm -hmm. And so we want to bring you in to share your expertise with these people and help answer their questions. And then if for some reason we can't do that, we do have additional resources that we can bring in mm -hmm. to help people to be successful in their mm -hmm. business. So. And I like to see that, and, and we would be happy to come in and answer questions mm -hmm. to small business, especially in minority businesses, mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Minority businesses is, is have a difficult time in, in Dublin. But the times is changing, and and I know them to know that if they do the homework mm -hmm. and put get the effort that they can succeed. Mm -hmm. And another program that I would like to maybe bring with the council once, uh, once we begin to have meetings, small minority businesses have, especially minority businesses have a issue problem with getting funding or resources. I would like to see if the Chamber of Commerce could come up with a program that to kind of mentor future business owners that wants to go into business, mm -hmm. make sure that they've got all the what you call the all the resources, all the tools res resource need. tools yeah, right. that they need, and of course with a good business plan, and they really sincere about going into business because right. it's not going to be easy. It's not even if you get in it, it's gonna still be some difficult times ahead. And then once they get identify those type of businesses, those individuals, then have some kind of program to the with the local banks, right? That they can then go, go to them and and they could prove that they worthy of getting the resources to get the business started and have a program where they have instant resources to get right. started. And, and I would tell you that, that's true, and I agree with you. Um, so awareness, mm -hmm. and it's creating awareness that, that all of what you just said is available. Mm -hmm. and, and we can help people, and we can coach people, and we can get them to those resources if they'll come ask. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what amazes me sometimes even. And, and of course, we, you know, we try push and push and push to mm -hmm. say chamber, chamber. But I can tell you, it, and I think we do a great job in our community, and we have a great presence here, but I could go to Kroger today and stand outside of Kroger for an hour mm -hmm. and, and ask a thousand people to describe the Chamber of Commerce or what mm -hmm. we do or where we are. And unfortunately, half of them aren't even going to know what we do or who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to continue to do a better job of, of presenting mm -hmm. the Chamber to the community and making sure people know. Um, you know. If I were in business today for myself and mm -hmm. somebody said, hey, I'm, I can put professionals together, successful people that do what you do, mm -hmm. and they're willing to come and sit down with you at no charge and offer their tips and their expertise to help right. you, I can get to the table fast enough. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's surprising. We, we probably did a little over uh, two dozen small business counseling sessions last year. It put that into perspective, yeah, yay, I'm glad we helped two dozen businesses to be successful. But I just mentioned we got almost 600 businesses that are members of the chamber and, and many, many more that are not. Mm -hmm. And so people aren't coming and, and asking for help in, in those resources. But, uh, yeah, we do have those resources available to help folks. Well, see, that's, that's the thing. A lot of them don't know. Right. right. And especially the minority small businesses, they don't know because a lot of them is not a member of the chamber. Right. And now it's changing, though. You see, oh, yeah, you see, a lot of them is coming in, and a lot of them is coming in because me and Diane is asking them, you know, to come in. Absolutely. And and some of them we're not asking, but then a lot of them see that we are there, right. and they they feel included. Right, and and that's important too. You you want to feel comfortable and, right. and with the crowd of people mm -hmm. that you're with, and and you do, and you've been there yeah. enough years now oh, to, yeah. to see there's a, a lot of change and and momentum and. Oh, sure. and, and our crowd and what right. I love and right. I come in on this our chair all the time our yeah. board chair uh, a business after hours or a breakfast it's a great opportunity I get to walk around the room and meet new people mm -hmm. uh, of all different races and, and, and genders and yeah. say hey mm -hmm. welcome and thank you for being here mm -hmm. um, so thank you for, for what you guys are doing again and, and helping be a part of that momentum and that growth in the community um, one of the things I like to do before we wrap up is always give our guests a, an opportunity to share anything that you want to share with the community. So we've got a great opportunity right now, hopefully a captive audience of folks that are enjoying the show today. Uh, we want to give each of you just a minute if you want to look into the camera and, uh, and talk about the business and, and just your being here in the community. I would camera. like to say that I'm proud of my husband because he always wanted this business. And, uh, he, he loved people and um, got a good attitude, and I'm proud of what we have accomplished uh, with the help of the good Lord, because I love the Lord, Amen. and I love to talk about the Lord, but I give all my praise and all the honor to God that we are where we are today because of Him, because He knew our heart. So I just like to say thank uh, uh, the ch Chamber 
Club allowed us to be a part of it, and 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 I'm just happy. Amen. Richard. Okay, I like to say to Dublin Lawrence County that Renesta is the venue of choice. Where if you can't do business at Renesta, you just can't do business. Amen. So I, what I like to say, I like to say that Renesta is is customer service oriented. That we'll do anything that we can to make you happy. If you chose us as your venue, when you chose us, you're not alone. We work for you. I would vouch for, for Richard and Diane on that. I've had the pleasure of being work with both of you, and, and thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for the service. And, and Mr. Richard, I want to back up and say thank you for your service to our country as well. Um, not only do you serve in the community, but you've also served the country, and uh, we appreciate you for that. And, and yes, um, Richard and Diane, Diane, great people, great community supporters. Uh, come and see them, give them a call, and uh, do business with them, and, and I think you, you'll certainly be happy that you did. I'd like to say one more thing. Yes, sir. I'd like to say to, to the Dublin and County community that when you do business with us, you, it has a great economic impact with Dublin and Lawrence County. When we have a wedding, we, uh, we have had people from India. When the Patels have weddings there, they have people that fly from overseas that comes to Dublin to weddings. And then we have, we've had, like I said, over 200 and some weddings. I did the figures, that's something like over almost 40,000 individuals that impact the local community here. So when you rent, rent when you rent, book us, you are actually impacting the economic impact of the community. People buying gas. You're buying gas, yeah. food and, and the motels that's and right. stuff like that. That's Great right. partnership all together. All so together. I want to say thank you again to you, you and thank you for joining us, helping us make today another great day for business in Dublin and Lawrence County.